Slab Waveguide Analysis Setup. Let's focus in on exactly what it is we're doing in this video. And we start with this map of all sorts of different waveguide analyses. This is about slab waveguides, not a channel waveguide. A slab waveguide, we have the direction the wave is propagating in, but in the plane perpendicular to that, if your waveguide is uniform and constant and of infinite extent in the other direction, you have a slab waveguide. That's what we're talking about here. So here's a picture of a slab waveguide, and I've pulled the propagating mode outside of the slab just simply so that we can see it. So we are letting our mode propagate in the Z direction. The Y direction is perfectly uniform. Nothing is changing in the Y direction, not even the mode itself. It's not accumulating phase. There's no amplitude variation in the Y direction. Literally nothing is happening in the Y direction. Now in the X direction, this is where our, the amplitude of the mode would change, where we have changes in dielectric. So the X direction is a more complicated direction. So this geometry lets us write the form of the solution. Just like before, the overall electric field is written as the product of two different terms. There's this amplitude term, and then there's this phase accumulation or oscillation term. So this beta, the phase constant, that describes how quickly this mode accumulates phase as it propagates in the Z direction. The amplitude term is now only a function of X. It does not change in the Y direction, does not change in the Z direction. The electric field does change in the Z direction. That's described by this oscillation term but the actual picture of the mode in the cross section does not. And here's some representative examples of what modes in a dielectric slab waveguide might look like. So these are different answers to the amplitude profile. And of course, each of these answers will also have its own phase constant, but that falls out of the analysis. We're not doing the analysis here. We're just setting up the governing equations to do the analysis. So slab waveguides, even though they are not homogeneous, they have a core and they have a cladding, they still support TE and TM modes. And let's talk about why that is. So we back up to our set of six coupled partial differential equations. These are the equations after we've substituted in our form of the solution. So we said in the last slide, this slab is perfectly uniform in the Y direction. Literally nothing changes in that direction. The mode is not even propagating in that direction. So any derivative in the Y direction has to be zero. That lets us go back to our six equations here and cross off any term that has a Y derivative. Now when we do this, something magical sort of happens. Here's our equations without those Y terms. Now what I'm going to do is color code the equations according to what I'm about to mention. Notice the terms in blue and the terms in red. The, the equations in blue do not contain any terms from the equations in red. And likewise, the equations in red do not contain any of the terms from the equations in blue. So Maxwell's equations have actually separated into two independent sets of three equations. The blue equations we will call the TE mode, and that's because there is no E naught Z anywhere in them. That means E naught Z is zero for the mode that we would calculate from the blue equations. Thus, we call it the TE mode. Similarly, the other three equations we would call the TM mode because there is no H not Z in them. H not Z would be zero, thus it's called the TM mode. So the TE and TM modes arise in slab waveguides because there's this uniform direction where nothing's changing that allowed us to cross off one of the derivative terms which caused some coupling, but that coupling's no longer there and Maxwell's equations have split into two independent modes. So let me just adjust these a little bit, make them look a little bit cleaner and rearrange the equation numbers. 
So these are our equations describing TE and TM modes. We have a little bit more work to do to simplify these down to a single differential equation for each mode. Let's look at deriving the single differential equation to analyze TE modes. So we need the wave equation for our TE modes. So the first thing we'll do is we will solve equations 3B and 3C for H naught X and H naught Z respectively. So we basically have solved for the magnetic fields in terms of the electric fields. Now what we'll do is we'll take these expressions for, of the magnetic fields in terms of electric fields and substitute them back into this first equation. So I've rewritten the first equation. We replace H naught X and H naught Z with the expressions we just derived in equations 4A and 4B. And now I multiply out, take derivatives, simplify, and I end up with the final governing equation for TE modes. So that's the equation we would solve to calculate the TE modes of a slab waveguide. Now we'll do the same thing for the TM modes. But we start with our three red equations that describe the TM modes. Following what we did before, we will solve equations 3E and 3F, but now we're solving them for the electric fields in terms of the magnetic fields. And we will take these expressions for the electric fields and plug them back into the left side of our first equation. So we'll copy our first equation. Now we will replace E naught X and E naught Z with equations 5A and 5B. And I can simplify that equation and I end up with the governing equation for calculating TM modes in slab waveguides. Here is some typical modes that we would calculate. So I've drawn the cross section of the slab waveguide. I've chosen the core in each of these cases to be 1.8 wavelengths wide. Why did I choose 1.8 wavelengths? Well, I just chose a big number because I wanted it to support multiple modes so that I could draw all those modes. Otherwise, I just pulled the number out of thin air. Um, but uh, you could solve these on your own, and here's some examples to replicate. And notice the TE and TM modes, they look very similar, uh, but the, the effective refractive indices, this is telling us essentially how much phase they're accumulating as they propagate, are slightly different. And for the TE modes, we are plotting the electric field and for the TM modes we're plotting a magnetic field so if we were to plot electric fields for both eh, they might actually even look a little bit different let's end this video with an animation or a visualization of a mode guided in a slab waveguide and then some key points so over on the right we see this animation and we can see that the mode is guided in the z direction it's confined in x and of infinite extent along Y. That's really hard to draw. I had to draw an ending on the Y axis, but that's not true. It, it's of infinite extent in the Y direction. So the first key point, there's only one direction of confinement here. The waves are only confined in the X direction. We don't see any wave energy on the high or low sides of the X axis. So the waves are free to spread out in the Y direction. And in fact, propagation could be in you know, a 45 degree angle here between the Z and Y axes. It just cannot be out of the YZ plane because that would imply that there's not confinement in the X direction. And then really we can always let propagation be in the Z direction just in terms of the waveguide analysis without loss of generality. If we really had a mode propagating at a 30 degree angle between the Z and Y axes in the YZ plane, it would have the same phase constant. It would have the same mode profile. It would have all of the same properties, just a different direction. So there's really no loss in information if we always assume that it's propagating in the Z direction. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for using EMPossible. I wanna create more videos and I wanna to continue to improve how electromagnetics and computation is taught online. To do that, it will really help me if you can like this video and subscribe to our channel. I also want you to know we have a lot more content that you may not be aware of. 
See everything we have to offer at eimpossible.net.